الحمد للہ و صلی اللہ و سلم علی نبی محمد و علی آلہ و صحبہ و سلم اما بعد A beautiful statement by Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah which illustrates for us how the Ummah or many amongst them Ummah even those people who were uh, some who were scholars and so forth had went astray and why is it they had went astray? Did they take a menhaj or a methodology other than the Salaf al-Saleh or perhaps was it their desires? Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah stated Verily, misguidance and desires overcame many of those who came later, meaning the muta'akhirin, through discarding the book of Allah behind their backs and neglecting what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent with from clarity and guidance and abandoning research for the path of those who preceded and the tabi'een and requesting knowledge about Allah from those who did not know Allah, the Almighty. What is so profound about this statement? What is so profound about this beautiful statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah is the fact that he illustrates on how many people from Ahl, how Ahl al-Bidah went astray. Why is it they went astray? Did they not believe in the book of Allah? And the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu No, you'll find many Sufis today, and of course Ashari's. And generally, the Ash the most Sufis have Ashari uh, aqidi when it comes to the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa taala. When it comes to the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa taala, they make ta'wil. They change the meaning to a meaning which is not mentioned in the Quran or the Sunnah. They they take it in make tahrif or ta'wil of the Arabic language. They Sometimes they even change the letters. And an example in the changing of letters, for example, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ الرَّحْمَانِ عَلَى الْعَرْشِ اِسْتَوَى Allah said, الرَّحْمَانِ rose above his throne. This is what it means. أهل ta'wil, the people like the Ashiris, they say no. They say, الرَّحْمَانِ عَلَى الْعَرْشِ Estola, they say Estola, and so they change the meaning, the actual letters in the Arabic. They say it means Estola, and they so then they're therefore changing the meaning, and they are changing the letters because it's Estola, which looks in in the Arabic language they're adding a lem Estola. This is the shan or the affair of Ahl Bida. So we find, let's go back to the statement of Shaykh al-Islam, verily misguidance and desires. So he, he said, verily misguidance and desires. Misguidance and desires, it comes about two ways. It comes about through, uh, as Shaykh al-Islam mentions in some of his other books, through shubahat or shahwat. Shubahat meaning doubtful manners, so that comes in bid'ah and creed. In changing the creed from what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam propagated, what his companions understood, and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us through his Qur'an. Or the other way in which people go astray is through following their desires, through shahwat. And shahwat could mean a person could fall into zina. Some people like, they watch pornography. Some people, they, they follow their desires and they drink alcohol and uh, take drugs. These are the ways we follow our desires. So, therefore, that misguidance, it comes in those two ways. It can come through shubahat, which is doubtful manners in your creed, or shahwat, which is... Uh, g falling into sins. And the Salaf used to regard sh uh, Shubahat, doubtfulness in Shubahat, as being more dangerous. Why? Because any time a person falls into sin, as a Muslim, they know they're falling into sin. He knows he's committing adultery. This woman, she knows she's drinking alcohol. And they usually feel sorrow for this, as a Muslim. So they feel, they feel something, and they want to repent. But the person who is involved in bid'ah, they believe they're on the truth. You're not going to have an, an ashari that feels sorry. You're not going to have the Sufi, uh, uh, um, a whirling dwarvish. You're not going to have them feeling sorry because they believe they're coming closer to Allah by dancing up a storm and s slobber coming out of their mouth and they believe they're coming closer to Allah. So, 
Back to the statement of Shaykh Islam, he said, Verily, misguidance and desires overcame many of those who came later through declare, uh, discarding the Book of Allah behind their back. So some of them, they actually did not, uh, they totally disregarded the Qur'an and neglected what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent with. So they re- re- neglected the sunnah, which he came with uh, clarity and guidance. He clarified the Qur'an and he gave us guidance. And abandoning research. This is a very powerful statement that Shaykh al-Islam said. Let's go to the Arabic, what he said. He said, وَتَرَقَهُمَ الْبَحْثِ عَنْ طَرِيكَةِ سَابِقِينَ وَتَابِعِينَ That is such a beautiful statement. It's translated as, and abandoning research. تَرَقَهُمَ الْبَحْثِ They left researching the haq. Isn't that, that's very profound. Why is that profound, you ask? It's profound and a very powerful statement. Because it's not that they abandon the truth only. Not that they abandon the sunnah only. Not that they deviated from the sunnah only. But they abandon researching the haq. Researching the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Researching what the Salaf as salih were upon. And wallahi billahi tallahi. I know people like this. I know a person who's a Sufi Ashari here with us in Jeddah. And this man, every time he wants to debate, I stop, I abandon debating with this man. Because every time you give him the truth, he doesn't want to, he doesn't accept it. He just says, my sheikh says. Or he brings some aqwal from certain books which are not from the salaf. He doesn't go from, he doesn't go to the early generations to support his belief in creed. And what is this, this proof with regards to our statement? Tarakuhum al bath al al haq. They left researching the truth. So for him, it's enough to go to a few books here, and for him, it's enough to say his sheikh his sheikh says this, or his sheikh or his tariqa says this. But he doesn't make research into the truth. They've abandoned researching, as Sheikh Al Islam said so profoundly in this beautiful statement. And you find the statement in his book called Al Hamawiya, Aqidat Al Hamawiya. So then the Shaykh said, and abandoning research for the path of those who preceded and the Tabi'een. So they abandon research of the Salaf, basically. Because you won't find the Ashidis and other groups finding people really from the Salaf. They can't say, oh, the Sahaba were Ashidis. They can't say this. They can't say, oh, the Sahaba, they made ta'wil of the, the, the Sifat uh, and they had ijma on on, on these issues. Abedin. They cannot say this. They can't say the tabi'een. They can't say that they uh, made these ta'wil and that they changed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's when Allah says Ar-Rahman ala ars to say the meaning is stola. They can't say the tabi'een did this. They can't say the salaf meaning the sahaba did this. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een. So they've abandoned research into those into uh, the people who preceded how they understood the religion and the tabi'een. And then here's the last part of the statement. The Shaykh said, and requesting knowledge about Allah from those who did not know Allah the Almighty. How perf- how powerful is that? That is a very powerful statement that Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala said, and may Allah bless him with jinnah to firdos, because he left us with the tools to be able to go back to the Salaf al-Saleh. He called us back to the Salaf al-Saleh. This was the path, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, and this is the shan and the affair of all the ulama, all the ulama that of Ahl sunnah is they call you back to the Salaf al-Saleh. They call you back to the early generations to what the Sahaba were upon, radiallahu ta'ala anum ajma'in. Going back to the statement, he said, and requesting knowledge about Allah from those who did not know Allah the Almighty. This is the affair of those people who had deviated. Look at, ask yourself about those people in this day and age that you know clearly are on misguidance. And if you don't know clearly that they're on misguidance, you feel uncomfortable because every time you ask them about something, and especially when it comes to something about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is clear from the Qur'an, and clear from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu they change the meaning. You say, hey, you know, Ar-Rahman ala ash istawa. Did he rise above his throne? Does, a, does Allah rise above, uh, rise above his throne? They say, oh, it means this. 
It means he took it be It means power. It means you know they they say Allah subhanahu wa taala's hands. That means ni'mah. Ahl Sunnah affirms Allah subhanahu wa taala's names and attributes in accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam without negating them. And we also operate by the qa'ida that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala laid down for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said fi kitabihi al-kareem laysa kamithlihi shay wa huwa sami'un alim wa huwa sami'un basir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said fi kitabihi al-kareem he said there laysa kamithlihi shay there is nothing that is that resembles Allah and Allah doesn't resemble anything. No one or nothing resembles Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing created resembles Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa huwa sami'un basir. So Allah made nafi, he negated that anything resembles him. First, in the first part of that ayah. And then in the second part, he made ithbat. He affirmed that he is all hearing and all seeing. So Allah possesses those attributes of hearing and seeing, but it is laysa kamithli shay, but it is not like our hearing, and it is not like our seeing, and our hearing and our seeing is not like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hearing and seeing, but it is befitting His Majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it's sufficient for us to know that He hears everything, He sees everything, His knowledge encompasses everything, there's nothing you can hide from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this some of the beautiful pearls from the Salaf, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with khair, and may Allah bless the Muslimin everywhere with guidance and forgive us for our many sins. And may Allah tabarak wa ta'ala guide our brothers who are ashiri and our sisters who are ashiri. May Allah guide them to the truth and to leave off the ta'wil and distorting the names and attributes of Allah. May Allah guide anyone who is a Muslim regardless of their bid'ah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide them back to the haq. And may Allah forgive us all of our shortcomings. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.